Hi, my name is Monique. I currently live in my 2022 Ford Transit Connect van in order to save money so that I can eventually buy land and live a simpler life. And I enjoy sharing snippets of my life with you all. I feel like you can tell by the title of the video, but just in case, I wanna let you all know I'm gonna be talking about periods in this video. I'm gonna mention blood. I'm gonna talk about menstrual products that I use. If these things gross you out, then I just wanna warn you, this video might not be for you. I don't feel like this is a gross topic. It's a question that I'm asked very often since I lived in my Buick. I've been asked this question for years. I've wanted to make a video about it for a while now because so many women ask me about this. And actually I haven't found many van lifers who talk about it. So I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> It's about to start. I can feel it. I'm not even talking about cramps or anything. There's just this feeling I get around three days to a week before my period starts. It's almost like this fluttering feeling in my body. Sometimes it's just in my uterus area or sometimes it's just my entire upper body, my chest, my stomach. I feel a million tiny little butterflies fluttering in my body. It's a very, it's a very interesting feeling. One question I receive often since I lived in my Buick is how do you live in such a tiny space when you're on your period? Aren't you miserable? Isn't it difficult? And my experience isn't much different than when I lived in a house or when I lived in an apartment. The main difference is a pretty big difference though and it's that I don't have easy access to a shower or a bath because I use showers and baths to soothe my cramps and I don't have the easiest access to that. There is one positive change I'm experiencing recently, but honestly, it has nothing to do with living in a house versus living in a vehicle. It has to do with changing my lifestyle and quitting my job where I worked 60 plus hours a week. At a certain point in my life, when I really started embracing my femininity, because you might not be able to tell, but I've always been a hardcore tomboy, hardcore tomboy but I got to a certain point in my adult life when I wanted to embrace my femininity. And I just started learning about the cycles of life, the cycles that women go through, the cycles that we go through as humans, the cycles through the seasons and how humans need rest during certain seasons. Winter is a time of rest. When the sun sets, that's when you rest. And when, you, when a woman is going through certain periods of her cycle, you rest. Life naturally tells us when it's a good time for us to rest. It's just that we don't follow it anymore. <laughs> we just go, go, go 24-7, 365. So the more I started learning about this and the more I started realizing the type of life I wanna live, the more it began to upset me that I can't live this lifestyle. I cannot just take days off when I'm on my period. The first two to three days of my menstrual cycle, I wanna be chilling. I wanna, if I do any type of work, I want it to be my choice, not an obligation. Yeah, so I'm only speaking for myself here. Not all women should have to do this. No, I'm not saying all women shouldn't have to work or all women this, all women that. Monique, Monique decided she should not have to work the first two to three days of her menstrual cycle for the rest of her life of having a menstrual cycle. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I already know that's never gonna happen in this society. So I'm gonna make that life for myself. I'm gonna create that life for myself. And I partially did. I'm at a point now where I don't have to work if I don't want to when my period starts. So I am going to work a shift tomorrow, but it's just one day for the rest of my menstrual cycle during this cycle. I'm going to get to relax and just do whatever I want to do. Um, it was something I wanted to do for so long and then I finally made it a reality when I quit my full-time job and I love it. I'm so grateful. I'm sure a lot of women are concerned about cleanliness and I feel like it's easy to be clean, especially when you have running water and a sink and you have your soap and all of your bathroom items in your van home or in your car home. It's not difficult to be clean. Like whenever I have to change my pad, I will change it in my van. I change it, wash my hands in my sink, 
everything is good. Just like if I was in an apartment, I would just go to the bathroom and change it. The process isn't any messier for me in this van than it is when I'm in an apartment or in a house. And I'm saying this and I'm someone who recently, I, I think this will be my third menstrual cycle that I've been using these, but I recently switched to organic cotton cloth pads. <laughs> Women who live in full-size homes don't want to deal with cloth pads, let alone living in such a tiny space dealing with that. But this is my third month doing it. It was really important to me because I'm just really trying to get more into natural living and saving money. So you guys know I love reusable things. Using reusable cotton pads is great for saving money, especially for me because when I was buying disposable pads, I bought the expensive ones because I would buy the pads that had the least ingredients. So of course, when you want something made with less ingredients, it costs more. <laughs> I'm saving a good amount of money each month by using these reusable cloth pads. It's a learning curve for sure, but I'm enjoying it. I don't ever see myself going back to disposable pads. I still have some left because I bought the reusable pads when I still had the disposable pads left. So I still have some disposable pads left. And I'm probably gonna have them for so long because I just don't use them anymore. I use the cloth pads. But if you're interested in that type of thing, I will show you the brand of cloth pads that I'm using. They're the first brand I've ever tried. So I'm definitely gonna shop around and try different brands. So far I'm liking this brand. They have little wings that you can snap closed so that they, the pad doesn't slide as much. And that's honestly the main reason why I want to shop around for other cloth pads. I wanna see if there are other brands that don't slide as round as much. It really makes me happy that I'm saving money on pads. It makes me happy that I don't have a bunch of chemicals and things all up next to that area. I designated two of my food storage bags to put them in. I have one food storage bag that I put the clean pads in, and then I have another one that I put the used pads in. And some cloth pad companies, they'll actually sell you a little baggie to put your used pads in until you wash them but you know me i'm gonna save some money and where am i gonna buy your bag i'll just use a bag that i have in my home <laughs> don't use that bag for food i have labeled it so that i know that is the bag that i always use for the used pads when it comes to the cloth pads and like rinsing, rinsing them out or anything that might gross some people out but things that come from my body don't gross me out especially not period blood i don't think period blood is gross i don't think menstrual cycles are gross and I'm not scared to touch my own blood. So whenever I have, so whenever I rinse the pad off before I put it in the bag, I just rinse it and I squeeze it, put it in the bag, and then I wash my hands. And I have no problem doing that. But that's all I can really think of to talk about. It's not much messier. When I lived in my Buick and I was changing my pad one time, it did like fall out of my hand and onto my bed. But like I said before, my menstrual blood, it just does not gross me out. So what did I do? I got some soap and water and I washed off my sheet. I scrubbed it and it came out immediately. My hands are clean, wash my hands. You know, just cleanliness in a van or, or a car isn't difficult. You just have to be clean. If you're naturally a clean person, I feel like you will be clean as a woman living in a van on your period. You just do the same thing you would do if you drop your tampon on the floor or something. What are you gonna do? You're gonna pick it up, dispose of it, wipe off the floor and wash your hands. There's nothing gross about it. When I'm out in nature, I don't get to take my I don't get to take my showers, but I definitely take my sink baths. It does suck not having access to a gym shower. But if it really got that bad and I was really that irritated, I would just leave the campsite and go to the nearest city with a Planet Fitness. I would. That's the beauty in this lifestyle. You know, you can just leave when you feel like leaving and go somewhere else. It is inconvenient, but it's an option. I let you all know that it's inconvenient, but hopefully you guys know just in general, life in a van and life in a car or a truck camper or whatever, it's mostly inconvenient. <laughs> the simple, simple daily tasks are mostly inconvenient. But I knew this when I came into the lifestyle, so I try not to complain about it too much. And I just try to explore the options that I have and do what I can do. I think that's everything. The rest of this vlog is really just going to be a regular vlog. I'm just going to be in my period while I'm doing it. <laughs> The 
the first day of my cycle, I worked the upshift shift that I had already signed up for. But the second day, I just went to the grocery store just to get some chips and some Lara bars. And I laid in bed for most of the day. Sir? What's up? Uh, tahini? Do you guys have tahini here? Did I overlook it? Normally we do. Uh, I thought it would be with like the nut butter or yeah, something. <laughs> we were out of it the other day. We might still be out of it. Oh. Although I've created a life for myself where I'm able to prioritize rest during my period, I still understand that life doesn't stop just because I'm on my period. My fridge needs to be restocked and my weekly meals need to be cooked. So after resting yesterday, I decided to grocery shop today so I can make my weekly meals tomorrow. A wonderful viewer told me to check out Home Goods and Marshalls to find cheaper Manuka honey, and I am so glad she left that comment. The Manuka honey was definitely cheaper at Home Goods, and I've never shopped here before, so I would have never known to look here. I went to Marshall's next, but their selection was very sparse. Green leaf lettuce, walnuts, yogurt, manuka honey. Thank you to the person who told me to go to Home Goods and Marshalls. Avocado oil, brown rice noodles, salsa, black beans, avocado, apples, and trash bags. I struggle so much with fitting my groceries in this tiny little cabinet. It takes forever to rearrange everything so that it will all fit. I'm constantly putting things in and then taking them back out and then putting them back in a different way and then having to take it out and rearrange it again. But it always works out in the end though. Somehow I always get everything to fit. This is the soap I've been using. It smells pretty good. I like the ingredient list. I'm gonna take a quick sink bath and then get in my pajamas, pull my bed out and relax. And I'll see you later.
got these sweet potatoes about a month or so ago from the farmer's market. I used most of them, but I've had these last three left for a while. So I wanna go ahead and use these last three before they go bad. One of the sweet potatoes ended up being white inside. <laughs> Thought I was recording that.
I had foil or anything, parchment paper, I would cover this. But I don't have anything like that in my van, so I'm just going to put it in like this. And of course, topping this with cheese would take it over the top. So if you try to recreate this dish, you can definitely add some cheese, regular cheese, or a dairy-free cheese. My air fryer is a 3.7 quart air fryer. And this, I think this says it's seven cups. It's the Anchor brand, if you can see that right there. Anchor brand, got it at Walmart, I think, or you can just order it online at Amazon. I see this brand everywhere, Target, everywhere. It's oven proof, so that's why I use it in the air fryer. So if you're wondering what size container can fit in the air fryer that I have, a 3.7 quart or larger, the seven cup food container by Anchor will fit in any air fryer that's 3.7 quarts or larger. Tiny bit of room on the edges. This is it. I don't know what to call it. Tex-Mex sweet potato casserole. I don't know. <laughs> but this is the finished product and it tastes good even though the top burnt and I wanted to show you all that the top burnt. You know so that you all can see that not everything always turns out perfectly when I cook it. The top got burnt but everything underneath the top layer is delicious. It's not burnt. Yeah I'm excited about this dinner. If you try to recreate this, I have one suggestion, and it is to boil the sweet potatoes for about three to four minutes to soften them, and it will cook way faster. <laughs> I didn't feel like doing that, so I skipped that step, and I ended up cooking this for about 45 minutes, and then I just let it sit in the air fryer for about another 20 minutes, just to make sure that the sweet potatoes were cooked through. If you slice your potatoes and then boil them for about three to four minutes until they're soft but not falling apart, you could put it in the air fryer for probably 20 minutes to finish cooking them through and it'll be done. I cooked it at 350 in the air fryer. Trinidad scorpion sauce. It's pretty good. This is really good. Annihilated. Finished cooking and 
cleaning, right as I was washing the last few dishes, um, I ran out of water. So I just went to Whole Foods and got some more water. Um, and I picked up a package, an Amazon package, my earbuds so that people on the treadmill next to me won't have to continue listening to what I'm watching on my phone when I'm at the gym. I feel tired. I'm going to lay down. I hope this video answered some of your questions. If you have more questions, then just leave them in the comment section and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But it's not bad. Being on your period, living in a car, or living in a van is not bad. I'm doing it now. I did it when I lived in my car and it's fine. So I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.